Hello and welcome to another episode of the LDM Show. I want to say thank you guys for coming and watching one. Uh, today, it's going to be kind of a, a light day. I, I just want to talk about a couple of stuff um, going on. There's been a lot of shows been canceled and a lot of things because of the, uh, the uh, man-made, well, I'll say man-made coronavirus. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm also going to be talking about topics that are going on uh, in the world, entertainment, stuff like that. And where do I find these things? I'm going to have to do a little cheap plug. At the LDM network.net. If you go to the LDM network, LDM network.net. Okay, not .com, not .org, .net. And then put slash news and you'll get up-to-date news, sports, entertainment, move, and movies. So we're going to do that right here on the LDM show. All right. Well, let's start with uh, what's everybody crying about the virus, the uh, corona virus. It's like that's the new talk because people don't want to talk about the chump guy or is it because they put that because of the chump guy? I don't know. Any old hoot. Uh, I, I'm still like I spoke about it last week a little bit. I'm not going to speak about it completely today. But uh, people are going crazy. I've seen videos. Where, first of all, what does a toilet paper have to do with the virus? People are packing up with toilet paper, packing up with the hand sanitizers and things like that. I even put up on, on my page that people, because I, I was hearing it on the bus. Anytime I put something up on my page, I just want to let people know, when I do put something on my page... It's mostly because I heard someone saying it and I thought it was stupid or funny. I had a comment about it and let you guys know. So I put something on the page stating that people were saying, when you get home, wash your hands. Don't forget. And I'm looking at the lady like, no. In my mind, I'm like, no. You mean when you get home, go take a bath. That heck you talking about wash my hands only. What? I'm hoping that everybody is so good now with washing their hands. I'm hoping that they, they that good in washing their butts. You know, because there'd be still stinky people out there talking about, there was, I'm no lie, this guy was, whew, he, he, he was thinking, his boy was thinking of uh, a weed out of toilet. Uh, that's the French perfume called, let me spray myself with the smell of weed. I call it weed out of toilet. <laughs> Smelling like that. But he talking about, ooh, I got to wash my hands. No, you got to wash your whole body. All right? Wash your whole body because it's kicking. Uh, I'm just saying. So, but anyway, people are going crazy. There was a fight in one of the uh, big department stores. I don't like saying names, but they were fighting over toilet paper. Really? What the heck is going on with the world today? Uh, my assumptions, the world, a lot of people are greedy, self-centered, self-absorbed. Uh, I can go on the list. They... Um, they feel entitled, angry, and everything. This lady literally had at least 10 packs of the ones that had packs inside. I think they had like four or five packs inside of sixes. You know, they were one of these big uh, bulk kind of um, papers, you know, like, you know, the the bulk of toilet paper comes six packs, and then they come four in that one pack. You know what I'm saying? So she had a whole lot that it was coming out of the top of the cart. And the lady that was arguing with her was like, all I want was one. And she was like, no, no. Like, really? Humans are that self? Uh, I, I want to curse. I want to scream, but I can't. You know, well, I, I could, but I just don't think it's that professional, and especially in the LDM show, we don't do that. But uh, are you so that narrow-minded that you can't just say, yeah, here's one more. I'm assuming since this is a big department store, they're going to reload by the next day 
or uh, a day after that because they might have it in the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. And how much of that toilet paper are you going to use in, in a couple of days by the time they reload? Seriously? I got a six-pack at home that's been there for weeks because I'm rarely never home. Um, but it lasts a long time. So you're going to tell me all that toilet paper. But listen, uh, humans, uh, and I know probably people were like, why are he calling them human? He, he act like he a Martian from out of space. No, when I say humans, it's just I can't. I like to divide them because I don't, I don't feel like I'm in that category with them. To be that naive that you can't give a person one pack. Like, yeah, here, one. Now, I won't give one person. Don't all of y'all want to come in and then I'm going to have to give everybody no. You know, so, and, and also it depends on how you ask. Give me one. No, I ain't giving you nothing now. Hey, I see you have a lot of uh, toilet paper there and they ran out. Can I get at least one pack? Bam, here you go, my brother. My sister, whoever, whoever acts, thank you. Baya, baya. You know what I'm saying? Plain and simple. We both go home stressless. Toilet paper. Come on. Go to the corner store. You probably could have gone down the block and get anyway. Fighting for water. And now, also, I've seen a video where people complaining and screaming to the people because there's no sanitizer. Uh... I'm old, I'm old school, and I'm cheap. If I don't have no sanitizer, it's called soap and water. There was this, I, I love the honeymooners, and I'm going to quote the honeymooners. There's always hope when you got water and soap. All right? They don't need the sanitizers all day, when, only when you're outside. But like I said last week, if you're so worried about wiping your hands down with the sanitizer all day, because I used to do that, and... I had to mentally stop it even before this was happening. You know, there's certain things that I still do that people probably don't notice. You know, uh, like buses, I put my fist on the pole like this. I, I, I've been doing that for many, many years. But um, if you're so worried about the sanitizers to, to use it, then use the gloves, the doctor gloves. What I call the doctor gloves, the examination gloves. Use those then. Walk around with that. Walk around with the uh, regular winter gloves. The other day, I had my son outside in the park. He was with the winter gloves. I put it, put it on because this is what I'm going to speak about. Also, um, uh, parents that don't give a F of what's going on. We were outside in the park. My son is playing, having fun. See the little kid coming down a slide. Boogers coming all over the place down like this. I'm, I'm literally the green one. You know what I'm saying? I know that's probably Tom Nasty. I know some of y'all be like, <laughs> you want to throw up? But uh, yeah. And she's just looking at him. Eh. And I was like, oh, does somebody got a tissue? Like I had to say it loud so you can understand. So I gave my son the gloves. I said, here's your gloves. I want to play. No, you wear it. And I said it nice and loud. No, you wear it because some of these parents out here got their kids all sick, all out in the streets. I was like, matter of fact, we're going to go to the next part. And exactly what we did, because I'm not going to sit there and get stressed. I'm a, sometimes, I'm not going to say 100% times, but 97% of the time, if I know what the problem is, I'm not going to stress the problem. I locate a solution and continue with that. So the problem was Booger, Booger Boy coming down the slides, and then there was another coughing kid when I moved him to the other side of the park. So my solution was, to get out. Now I'm stressless. I'm not arguing. I'm not screaming. I just leave. Why would I sit there? Oh, why you got these kids out here? Like some of the people do. Like they want the whole show and they hope. No. Let's go to the next part. I'm good. Oops. Dropped the phone. Ah. Just trying to see somebody's texting and it's vibrating like sliding off my, my, my pants and I'm trying not to, uh, to see. But, uh, it's a thing that, and then plus, the same parent tells this kid to slide down a, 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 a slide that goes around like that. There was kids coming up. First of all, as a parent, my son, he was saying, hey, you're not supposed to go up that way. You're supposed to go up the stairs. And I, 
I tell my son, be quiet. You, you, you don't know too much martial arts yet to protect yourself. <laughs> but uh, it's true because I keep telling him, you don't go up the slide because someone might be coming down. You can do it when there's no one in the park, but when there's a lot of kids running around and stuff like that. But it's like parents do not teach them. They're like, hey, it's a park. Let them be. They let them run, play. That's what they do in the park. No, that's not what they do in the park. Respect, honor, and understanding has no takeouts in anything. In the park, everywhere you go, you need those three standards for your kids. They need to learn how to respect other kids that are there, especially if you're in a young park and you're having these big kids running around playing tag and there's these little babies trying to learn how to climb up some stairs, trying to learn how to go down a slide. By you running, pushing, and everything, it could make these kids fear that, and they would not want to do it. So, respect. Be honor, you know, have honor. Add, add of the respect. And an understanding of what's going on in your surroundings. And as a parent, always as a parent, you always teach your kid. Even if you're not telling him, learn this, or listen to what I'm telling you. But teach in a certain way. My son comes down. He, the lady was like, okay, you can come down. He stood standing there. And I just stood staring at him and I stared at her. Oh, that's your son? Yes. Well, he, I told him a couple of times he could come down. I said, he ain't coming down until your son gets off the slide. Safety first. And as soon as his son came off, my son slide down. Because this is what I teach him. So your kids re represent what you do in your life and I noticed that more now with my with, with my son because sometime uh, the other day when I put my gloves down I came back to go get my gloves right next to my gloves was his gloves so like everything I do he would do so you have to watch that so that's why when I see kids disrespectful I say hmm is that how their parents are because that's a reflection of them. So remember, every kid is like that ripple effect. If you throw that little rock in the water, it has the, the uh, effect. So that first rock you throw affects the child's life. So you're going to complain about the coronavirus, this, the flu. Listen, germs, flu, AIDS, all these stuff has been out. And now people are screaming. There's still nobody wearing rubbers. There's still, because if, if, if it was so, so uh, protective, people would have not been getting AIDS from sexual transmitted disease. They would have probably still got it from the blood transfusions, stuff like that, but they would never have got it from sexual um, conduct, uh, contact, I'm sorry, if people would have been using the protection, correct? So there are still people out there that is getting it, because they're not using the protection. Or they got it from their partner not using the protection, thinking their partner was, you know, straight with them. And they're not. They're out there hoeing around. So their partners are not using the protection. So either way, protection. But you don't hear nobody speaking about that no more, right? Some people say, oh, yes, Charles, it's because they got a cure. They got Listen, a word cure means you would never get it again. That's what cure means. So there's no cure. There's a patch. A prevention. That's what there is. There's no cure for it. Okay? There's basically no cure for anything if you think about it. Because it always can come back. There's a patch. Or there's a, whoo, it stopped it for now. Just like people with headaches. Whoo, I cured my headache. No, you didn't. You never hear nobody say, I cured my headache. I stopped my headache. I have no headache no more because they know they're going to get it again. That's the same thing with all these uh, illnesses and stuff. It's just a patch. So protect yourself, you know, no matter what. Um, check the parks. Check, especially I live in the Bronx. Before my child, he, he even looks at the slide. Okay, dad, it's not wet. It's not dirty. We look around. There's no needles. And it's sad that I got to teach my kid this. Make sure there's no, no crap on the floor, meaning, you know, poop. Because how many times we went to a, a park and there was stuff. So teach your kids. That's all I got to say. 
Um, with As mighty armies clash in a struggle for total domination, the scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world. <coughs> Guys put a lot of smoke in today. Wow. But anyway, we're expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LDM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to light. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here. And here are the country nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. Deborah Henriksen with Let Go. Destiny Banos with My Family and Me. What happened to those days, days I used to love, filled with simple things, surrounded by love, a special Sunday treat, an ice cream or a sweet, my family and me. Amy McAllister with Here I Am. Amy Serenio with The Time Is Now. The time is now, ready to face this mountain. The time is now, one thing I know for certain. The time is now. These were the country nominees of the 2020 LDM Music Awards. And here are the gospel nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. Zandra Arnold with Lord You Are. You are the Holy One. You are the Great I Am. You are Amy McAllister with You Don't Have to Walk on Water. When the winds cut so deep and I reach down to find the answer that you seek, you don't have to walk. Aaron Graham with Found. It's found in you. It's found in you. You are my guide and light. It's found in you. Arthur J. with God Will Make It Better. Those were your gospel nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. And here are the Latin nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. Los hermanos Colon Con. Sabré olvidar. Funk, salsa, urban, com, no hay. 
Anoche me llamó pidiéndome perdón Llorando lentamente por romper mi corazón ¿Tú crees que hay amor? Ella me preguntó Cuando le respondí dije sin equivocación Aquí no hay amor Elvis de Cena con Te quiero mucho Javier Luis con El delincuente Yo no soy un delincuente Yo me llevo con la gente Si tú crees en mí Como creo en ti That was your Latin nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. The reason why I'm speaking about kids is because a week or so ago, a bunch of, of kids attacked a girl. Don't know the whole scoop of the reason why, and the reason why I never checked to see why the whole scoop is, is because I don't care. Hear me out. I don't care what was the reason for you to jump the girl. Because there was no reason at all in the world to prop for all of you guys to attack a girl. There was none. If you think of one, I'll wait. I'll have you host the show, pay you, if you can think of one random reason why every guy had to jump this one girl. That's why I don't really care what prompt this. It's because it's called coward. Why are you jumping one person? 15, 20, 30, it doesn't matter. Jumping one person and a female at that. As a martial artist, I, we learn if they can't walk, they can't run, they can't hurt you. They can't swing, they can't hit you. We, I'm not going to say all martial arts because there are some martial artists, uh, teachers that teach wrong, but that's a different story. But I learned from my teachers, uh, martial arts is a prevention, how to prevent from a person to continue to attack you. Um, so that's why you, you, you see a lot of grappling, throwing on the floor, breaking of a leg, breaking of an arm, something like that. Cause I will, I don't care. Breaking the leg, breaking an arm. I'm telling the truth. Because I feel like if you can't attack me no more, I'm safe. The problem is, I'm not going to keep beating you and beating you and beating you as you're down. Uh, we believe, well, I, I keep saying we, but I believe as a martial artist, if you, if your opponent cannot fight no more, the fight is over. If you show that person your heart, you might just win a person's heart. If you know what I mean. So with these kids beat them and beat them, it pissed me off. And then it pissed me off so many different ways. And again, guys, if you agree with me, perfect. And if you don't agree with me, perfect. Because that's why we're here speaking to each other. Comment below. And, and also remember, if this is your first time watching the show and you like or dislike what I'm talking about, hit that like button. Or the follow button. I don't know which platform you are. But hit it. But most of all, always. And I got to keep saying this. Hit the notification. If you have the notification on, you will always know when I'm live or when I'm putting up an another video. But anyway, I was teed off because, first of all, it's a, a one female versus all these guys. Video. I don't even care if it's one guy versus all the guys. It's still bad no matter what it is. Um, and then, as an analyst, I can say, let's say there was 15 of those kids. I think only two or three of them were the angry ones to start it. Because there always has to be a starter, right? And then there's a starter, and most of the time, the one that wants to start the argument and start the fighting, doesn't really want to fight. So you have to have the, uh, the person to push you, that second person that pushes Whoa, yeah, yeah, you should do that. Yeah, go. And that same person looks to the back and says, yeah, let's go. Yo, we should, yeah, we, we're going to join you. Yeah, let's go join him. So the rest start following. The third person always like, yeah, yeah, I, you know what? I, 
not sure, but he wants to follow that second person because he's hyping. He's the hype man. The first person, I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of time, the first person, second or the third, one of those three doesn't really want to do it. But they have to because everybody else is already falling in line. And then everybody, then the other ones are just hitting because they don't even know why they're hitting. If you were to call every single one and say, why you hit that girl, they would have probably never even knew. Later on, they would know, but during that uh, confrontation and everything, they would not know. So that's one of the reasons why it's sad. We're having so much of this world that are followers and crybabies. What is going on? And these are the kids that are supposed to be taking care of us. But again, it brings me back to what I just said. Is a reflection, or is it a reflection of their parents or the society or the community that's around them? I don't know. Comment below. I, I would love to speak about this, uh, to hear about it, um, to see what is going on. Second thing that I uh, believe that is teased me off is a lot of the kids were black kids. Got to say it. They were black kids. As I was speaking to, you know, my African-American friends and uh, some of my black friends, we were just hanging out. They were teed off, too, because I said one thing and they agreed. Doing stuff like that takes everyone back six, seven hundred years. As a matter of fact, it'll take us back a hundred years before, before uh, slavery. That's how far it takes us back by you doing things like this that makes everyone else say, you see, you see, and you want us to help them and you want us to do this. This is why I'm telling you people as black and brown people, uh, the Spanish people, the black people, this is, I'm, I'm speaking to you guys right now. These situations or these things that get caught in the news and everything keeps bringing us down a notch, keeps bringing us down and bringing us down. And then you have, not to pat myself on the back, but you have a lot of the people on this network that tries to bring us back up by talking about community events that are going on. We have a black and brown show called The Common Section on Sundays who teaches the black and brown different ways to react and different ways to do things. You have my show was a community talk show. Um, so you have other shows like that that are trying to bring it up. Then you have community people out there that are doing stuff. And then here it goes. You bring us back down again. So you see what I'm trying to say? Uh, it's hard and it's um, emotions. Like you're angry and you're sad about it because they're kids. What is going on? You know? So we need to stop. And then the third thing that I, I think that this shows is I hear a lot of people talk about prejudice and racist and stuff like that. Oh, you wasn't, you were, because uh, I've seen a video, a beautiful video where a black and a white baby kid about a year, two years old, they seen each other and they ran, they gave a hug and then they, they left and the fathers were just like, wow, because they, I guess they didn't know that they were friends. They're hugging and running. And then the comment says, prejudice and racist is not uh, into their soul or in, uh, they were not born with it. I mean, they were, they were taught, you know, because of the thing. And that phrase, everyone says, but with this video, it shows it. And hear, hear why I'm saying it. It shows that it's taught. Because I speak to a lot of black and brown people, especially adults and everything like that. They are starting, they say, this is the reason why I'm starting to hate my own people. You see, you're teaching how people to be prejudiced and racist. I spoke about it on my, my show, Speak Out, one time. And I asked these people, if you see a bunch of white people walking up on the street, and on one, the other side you see a b bunch of black uh, kids running around and coming down the same street, which side would you walk on? A lot of people said, the white side. I made the joke and said, the white side, as long as it's not in the woods and uh, there's people out there because they might take us and 
and chop us up. <laughs> it was just a joke I made. But, but in all honesty, when I did that experiment, I said, why? And they said, you don't see? All these kids hitting and all these kids want to do this thing. And then when they're in the group, they want to act up, blah, blah, blah. They never experienced it. They never got attacked. They never got, you know, jumped or anything like that. But what they see made them prejudiced and racist. Not towards the, um, the thing, but to the situation. You understand what I mean? Like, does it make any sense? To the situation is what it is. So, myself, too, I'm like, every time I see two, three, walking out, making all this noise, I'm like, oh, here we go. Get prepared. Get ready. I'm, I've been always ready, you know, because, again, as a martial artist, you're always pretty much alert. And, but I'm like, why do we have to do that? Why can't it be like when I was living in the country, I would walk and people would, because I was shocked when I first started living in the country. Hey, how you doing? I'm looking around like, you talking to me? I'm like, oh, here we go. You ain't setting me up. Come over here talking about how you're doing and you're going to try to throw me in the van or something. But it wasn't like that. I was like, wow. Hanged out. First time, true story. First time I, I lived in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I didn't know nothing. So I was like, Mentally, like, oh, I get ready. I got like a week and a half to go to uh, school. So I'm sitting on the porch drawing. Comes a young white kid, uh, looks at the drawing and says, wow, that was a nice drawing. Um, I didn't know you can draw like that. I was like, I'm looking at him at first. I didn't, it didn't ring. Like, you didn't know I could. You don't even know me. You know what I'm saying? But then I sat down. He was a young kid. I didn't want to be all smart with him. Sat down. Started drawing, but I was like trying to move away because I was like, mm, I don't know, I'm Spanish, sitting here with a yo, young white kid. I'm like, where are the parents at? Then all of a sudden you hear the screen door open, big type of uh, biker comes out. Hey, Chuck. But I, I was like, oh, okay. I heard that name before. My name is Charles, and I, I heard a couple of white people call me Chuck, which I always stopped them. I'm like, no, my name ain't Chuck. So the kid got up. He said, yeah, what's up? Oh, oh, dad, I'm just... Uh, watching this guy's drawing. Here he comes. My mindset being a New Yorker, like, oh, okay, here we go. The guy said, oh, hi. Oh, yeah, you might, the new neighbor. Blah, blah, blah. My name is Brian. And I'm not going to say last name, but because you know white people always say their first and last name. <laughs> and he liked the, uh, the drawing. And he seen that I was drawing. Finds out he was a martial artist as well. I was a martial artist. His kids were learning. Since day one, that's first day, we became friends. And uh, shout outs to him, Brian, his son Chuck, uh, that was there. You have um, my first student, Scott Dow. Um, Scott, he, uh, another guy, and you know, they country folks, you know, hillbillies, shotguns type of things, you know what I'm saying? And my mindset towards them was what I seen, but then I met them. So you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is we're being prejudiced and racist towards a situation that many people have not been in is because of what they've seen. So we need to educate these kids somehow to not attack or do things like this, to think about it. I don't know how we, we're going to do it, but it takes a village. That's all I got to say. With that shed, said, <laughs> shed. <laughs> with that said, I'm going to take a short break. And I'm going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, news and situations of how we can change the world. Because it is getting warmer and people are getting a little more crazy. So this is Charles Aloma. This is the LDM Show. We'll be right back. And here are the pop nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. Madison Mueller with Exhale. Harder to try. Deborah Henriksen with Because. There's an ocean we could fly. In that ocean, I will sigh. Take a moment, tell me. 
Kenny Supreme with Deja Vu. I know I'm having doubts for you, cause it's been a life. Deja Vu, feel like, feel like, it's been like Deja Vu. This ain't feeling right, cause it's been like Emma Goldberg with The Fire of Love. Won't tell you no lies. Those are the pop nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. And here are the R&B nominees of the 4th LDM Music Awards. Fabian and T.A.B. with Joy Ride. All I wanna do is fall in love with you, baby. You can take me you on a joy ride. I just wanna fall. We can keep it going no night. I just wanna fall in love Let with you. Let it the moon. Daryl Perry with Inside of your love. Show me the ways of your ecstasy. I wanna go deeper inside. Inside of your love. In my arms you lay. Girl, if it's okay, I wanna go deeper in Vanity and Fabian with Baby I. Sandor with Doctor. The foes was the R&B nominees of the fourth LDM music. Cranberry Merchants with Going Nowhere. <laughs> the Argon Red with For Lack of Words. Back through the delirium trees with back through. And here are. Hey everybody, I'm Will D. I am Javier Luis. I'm Alex Polanco. I'm Apolonia Cruz. And I'm Kelly Cabo. I'm Charlie Fell. I'm Emmanuel Anzule. Do you know one in four women will experience domestic violence during their lifetime? And domestic violence and abuse can happen to anyone. Regardless of gender, race, or other factors. Two out of three homicide cases are females who were killed by a family member or intimate partner. As domestic violence victims, they face high rates of depression, sleep disturbances, anxiety, flashbacks, and other emotional distresses. And without help, witnesses of domestic violence are more vulnerable to become abusers themselves. Thus continuing the cycle of violence in the next generation. Hello, I'm Charles Aloma. Join the LDM Network in a safe horizon and take a step into changing these facts. So if you are or know someone that is being abused, please call the City Domestic Hotline at 1-800-621-4673. So that is 1-800-621-HOPE. Speak up, speak out, and make a difference. And just know that you don't have to deal with this alone. There is help. Uh, welcome back to the LDM show. Um, thank you guys for staying on and uh, listening to me rap and rave. So, 
again, it is starting to become warmer out here. So I, I just want you guys to know to be more alert of what's going on because last, uh, what was it? Uh, matter of fact, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday um, there was a lot of people outside and things like that. And again, trying to figure out humans, the human behavior. And it's so funny because, like I said before, if you guys didn't know, I did a lot of criminal analysts. Um, for people that don't know what that is, I study criminals. I study the behavior of things in, in crime, basically. So I help lawyers and things like that. But uh, I still babble about some of the people. Point taken, on the bus, real pack. I put my bag in the front just to make a little bit of room. Of course, common sense, courtesy, things like that. Things that people forget about. But anyway, made rooms, you know, so some people can move over. Far side of me, I hear the person saying, and what? Where you want me to go? Like, I can't go nowhere, blah, blah, blah. And the lady cursing the guy out. And the guy was like, yo, listen, this is what I'm talking about. You girls want to get loud and all in a man's face. And if I punch you, I'm going to be wrong, right? I, he was like, you know what? This is not my stop. I'm going to have to get off this bus because you're acting up. So there's two points I'm going to make up this. The one with the woman thing in a few because I want to talk about that. But the point that I really want to make is, what is going on with the world? Why is everyone pretty much so angry and not understanding? The bus is packed. If you can get on a bus that is not packed, I mean, I'm sorry, that is packed, and driving in New York City and does not bounce or shake to the side or do anything like that, to kudos to you because there is no such thing. When you're on that bus, you're going to be moving, swaying, side. You're going to be moving. It's going to be bouncing up and down. And then when you're packed, you're bound to bump into someone. A couple of times people bumped into me. They'll look back and say, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, you don't need to be. It's, you can't control it. It's, we're on the bus. You know, I don't mean that you can't control it because you're dumb or something like that. I just mean you can't control the emotion of the bus. So they arguing in the back for what? Here's the problem. You're on a crowded bus. Potholes everywhere. Bus weaving and, and, and jiving and going this way through the traffic. So you're moving back and forth. You're going to be winding up bumping into people. Here's a solution for y'all people that want to argue all the time about it. Wait for an empty Wait for the empty bus. Don't take the bus at that time then. Because you are going to get bumped. So to it. You know? You're going you're gonna to wind up getting bumped. You're going to wind up getting hit or so something. So for to get stressed and argue, because I can't argue. Um, I still fight myself from that. Um, this is the reason why I guess I started being a Buddhist and started meditating because... I had anger issues, um, not lying. So when people argue, I just like go. I leave them arguing by themselves. If you want to argue, come to my show. We can debate about stuff. If you want to uh, like fight, I don't know. Maybe we can go to the ring or something. I don't. I don't know. I just it, time is too sh short. Like I hear everyone saying, "Wow, time is short. Time is short." Yeah. Especially when you go towards your 40s and 50s, you realize, wait a minute, people die in their 70s and 80s. So I only got like good 20, 30 years. Where the heck did my 40 years go? That went fast. So imagine the next 20. So that's why a lot of people say time goes too quick. So I'm not going to be worrying and arguing with you for a bump bus. Argue for yourself. You're going to keep on arguing. I'm just going to be like, okay, cool. Boom. I'll just do like the guy did. Maybe get off the next stop. But I won't announce it. Because now you would announce it. Let's say if that person would have want to come outside with you. What are you going to do now? You know what I'm saying? Because the majority of the times, I watch a lot of people's body language. The majority of the time, they don't want to argue. They just want to, you know, Arr, like the bears do. Arr, they want to get big. Arr, so you can get scared and go away. 
That's basically what they're doing. So uh, find a different solution than that. I know, I know what they say is when the devil is on the uh, throne, everyone gets crazy. Maybe that's what's going on right now. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. It could be it. It could be not. I don't want to get like into the uh, historical stuff. Um, but uh, ch -ch 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 I want to do shout outs to Anne An An Rose. Uh, shout outs to Shirley, um, Apollonia, and a couple other people that watch the show pretty much every single day. Um, but I just want to take a moment and say I want to shout out all the shows that are on this network as well. Um, I've been watching, I engineer the shows. So I've been watching the growth and the way they go at it um, to push no matter what conversation or topic they're doing to push it so people can understand. Um, I love to show both sides of the story so you can see for yourself, how dumb some of the situations you put yourself in. You know what I'm saying? Like the argument of a, of a full bus. Now, if it was an empty bus and you're bumping into that person many, many times, and there's a lot of space, then that's a big difference. Um, so shout out to all the shows there. Uh, I am looking for uh, a comment here. Oh, got it. So shout outs to, uh, I want to say, his, to Felix. Cabo, uh, I think I said his name at Camp Bowles, C A M P O. Anyway, Felix, he put a, a picture of a little kid that got beat up by a little girl. I seen that comment. I said, "Wow, what would you do?" He said, "Uh, uh I'm, I'm gonna quote him. Feminist needs to come to terms with the double standards." Of oh, conversations that um, what women have and that includes their capability toward violence. And this was a picture by that was posted, he shared by David Ali King. Um, he posted that picture, he shared it on his page, and then people commented on it. One person, I don't want to shout out some people's name. <laughs> Somebody said, teach self-defense. True. But teach them mental defense as well. That's what we need to do. Um, but I'm trying to get, oh. This is what sparked the whole thing, and this is what sparked me to comment as well. And before I even say that comment, if you heard the story about the bus, the guy said, this is the problem with your female. You want to get into a male's face, but then when they punch you, you want to cry and act up, which I always said, this is a problem with, I don't care if you, because this is a problem with, I always say with the female empowerment or the female movement is what, not the empowerment, because that's empowering other women, but the, the woman movement, the female movement want to be equal, want this and want that, I'm all for it. Uh, this is the reason why I made the, sh uh, the event um, Nothing But Woman Power, because I'm all for it. My mom brought me up showing women has power to do a lot. But the woman power men and, and the feminists and all that, they do one thing that I hear a lot from the adults when I was growing up. My mom, every, everybody. Do what I say and not what I do. You ever heard that? That's what a lot of females are doing. I want equal rights. But whoa, whoa, whoa. If I hit you, you can't hit me back. Do what I say, but not what I do. It's a problem. Big problem. I'm telling you, there's going to be people out there. And the problem is that the guy, he would have hit, like, for self-defense, he probably would have wind up going to jail because 
automatically they think it's the man that beat up the woman. But they never really ask any questions on why. The problem with the world today is when I was young, when we took social studies, literacy, and all that, this is the five W's and the H. Remember that? The who, what, why, where, and uh, when, and the possible uh, the one thing the cops do, because I've seen it a lot, what happened here? Who was the person that hit you? Where is that person that hit you? You know what I'm saying? How did the person hit you? The four. But they never ask that one W question. Why? Not that many. I'm saying they do. some of them do. But the why question needs to be asked in a, in a broad and open way. Not why he hit you. What was the reason why he hit you? Had to be a reason. Oh, because I said shut up. And he's abusive. Boom, that's not a good reason to hit a female. Now you got to go to jail. Oh, because he, I, he kept bumping me on the bus and I screamed at him and I went to swing on him and he hit me. Self-defense. You understand what I'm saying? So that's, I'm not saying the guys to start beating on, on girls, but I'm just saying stop saying do what I say and not what I do. In other words, if you want equal, you have to get equal. You know how they say equal force brings equal force back? You know what I'm saying? So the harder you push something, the harder and faster it comes back. You understand? So uh, we need to learn how to find that fine thing. Maybe don't say I want to be equal. Maybe ne as a female, let's cut that word out. I don't want to be treated as an equal. Because as an equal, it means that. So if a guy goes to jail for hitting a person outside, a female, a female should be going to jail too. That's what I got to say on that. And that brings me to this one question about the kid that got beat up by a little girl. I know some people said, hey, did the little girl like him? Because sometimes the little, you know, back in the days they used to say, no, not the bruises. She said, stop making it seem like venomous want to both not be hit by a man while wanting the freedom to hit a man at will. This is your unfound belief based on nothing more than your ignorance and dislike of venomous. No feminist advocates for violence by or towards any ge uh, gender, you bastard man. <laughs> Let me break that down for you. As an analyst, we break down every single word. First of all, you said, no feminist, and I'm quoting, no feminist advocates for violence by or towards any gender. Then you ended it with a, you bastard man. W what? So, you're not violence, a violent person, but f people forget the words that you say are violent because you're starting a violent conversation. You're angry towards a person brings up violence. So you're talking about your bastard man. Sound like you're, you're a violent person. You're angry, violent. Because there's no such thing as, I'm an angry man, but I'm so gentle with people. No. If you're an angry man, that means you're a violent person. You're you, you going to start swinging on people. Because I hear people, oh man, oh, you don't want me to get angry on you. That means they're going to wind up hitting you, meaning you're a violent person. So when you said bastard man, you were angry. Angry leads to a violent. 
doesn't mean that you you love going around hitting people. I'm not saying that. It just means that is part of being violence. So that whole thing just fell apart from you. The other thing it says, feminists want doesn't want both. I mean, sorry, feminists want to be both not be hit by a man while uh, wanting the freedom to hit a man. She's saying that. In other words, she's saying no female goes out there saying they want to hit a man, but they don't want the man to hit back. Yes. And if you are a female, you know. That's why it's called what I call the uh, ghost PFA. You're going around and there's been so many cases. And if you don't believe me, Google it. If you don't find it, ask me. I'll show you the case numbers by cities on how many cried wolf. And then they find out it never happened. Or they find out they attacked first. But right away, the judge has been giving these, these uh, order protections out to people that don't really need it. And it's sad because the ones that really do need it are having problems. Guys are coming out of jail because they're finding out it wasn't true. The girl struck first. There's a video that went viral at a movie theater with a girl saying, go ahead, I wish you would hit me and then hit the guy. Oh, come on. Huh? You know you can't hit a girl. You know you can't hit a girl. So now I'm going to have these girls saying, oh, but she's not a feminist. She's not for women's empowerment. She's a woman. doesn't matter. Because right away, you're backing up. Like, oh, no, no, she's not part of us. That's why. Even this one comment, oh, you're not part of the circle. Okay, I have my circle. I have wrestlers um, people in my circle. I have martial artists, business people. They don't do stuff like that. But doesn't mean it does not happen. People hitting people outside in the streets, beating up people. It's not happening because it's not my circle. It is happening. So if you're thinking about your circle, that just means you're being blind. You're, you're, you're the horse now. You're running like this. You're only looking at your circle. Hello? Out in the world... There are differences. Um, so, and, and I like this. That's why I, I had to put it. But, uh, you know, there's more to it. And then, uh, you know, to quote, other people were arguing and talking about it as well. But, uh, you know, we're running out of time, so I wish I can continue talking. But I just want to say, guys, thank you for uh, coming. I'm watching the LDM show. We're going to talk about this maybe next week. A little bit more, and maybe I'll get a couple. I, I don't know during the course of week because I, I forgot who we, if we're having a guest. But anyway, watch what you say. Don't have the blinds on. Look out of your circle because things do happen in the world that you think are not happening. Doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means you need to hope and keep in mind that there's a whole world out there. All right. This is Charles Aloma. We'll see you next week.